My name is Patrick Lissier, and I'm a uh, director of my Blade Valentine 3D. Of course, the you know the pickaxe flying at you, I think, I think it just worked great. The scenes with uh, Kevin Ty and uh, the shotgun, that whole sequence is, is wonderful. Uh, the scene with uh, uh, Tom Atkins on the porch, I think, is probably my favorite. There's so many of them that I think are great. You know, as simple as the scene in the forest and all the texture in the leaves and the tree. Even a conversation scene, like the scene in the grocery store with Jensen Ackles and Jamie King, where they're just talking to each other in the grocery store. We see all the depth behind them, the rows of the, uh, the magazine racks, the cigarette racks, the, the, the other cash registers behind Jamie, and all the Valentine's display behind uh, Jensen becomes intoxicating to look at, you know, the texture of her hair. As simple as that, because it is real life. That is how you see. You see with, you know, most people see with stereo vision, and being able to present the world in that kind of stereoscopic way is an incredibly powerful tool. I think any genre would work in this. Anywhere where you can set it, where you have depth and everything behind them. The closer you are, and the more the 3D screen fills your field of vision, the more pronounced the 3D effect will be. So if you're sitting back, it's not going to feel like things are coming way out to the audience. If you're seeing, sitting closer, it'll feel like way more things are coming out to the audience. It has to do with how much it fills your field of vision. If you're literally closer and your entire frame of reference is the screen, you're going to feel all the 3D uh, uh, moments that extrude out to the audience far, far more than you will if you're sitting in the back. We, uh, there was a part of that scene that we did cut out that uh, will be, uh, I believe, will be on the DVD, which had a moment that was quite funny in terms of uh, Frank the Trucker does something as, uh, as they're finishing uh, the lovemaking. He perhaps finishes earlier than he should, and his, and the top of his head is coming right out into the audience. But that ultimately would cut just for pace and time. <laughs> Certainly, they're going to they're do it. Uh, going to do that. It may be an anaglyph version, the red and blue glasses that translates into into TV quite simply. Until you get like televisions that can translate the 3D, which are just now coming out. You need active glasses as opposed to passive glasses. Passive glasses are the ones you just pop on when you're in the theater. Active glasses actually have a, a battery and a built-in shutter that allows you to watch it. And that would allow you to do polarizing, but they're actually much more expensive. <laughs> It has to be two cameras, you have to have two, you're, it's the same way you see, you see with your left eye and your right eye. 3D works the same way, it's literally how you see, so you have to record in two totally different sets of information that are then overlaid, and the glasses allow you to decode that. <laughs> this latest resurrection of 3D feels like where it's actually going to click. The technology is so advanced now, it, 3D is actually a pain-free experience to view. It's, it's no longer, you know, the anaglyph red and blue glasses. Uh, you know, it's a polarized glass. A year ago, I knew almost nothing about it. Now, you know, having shot a whole movie and finished a whole movie in it, you know, you kind of become an expert. 3D is intoxicating. It is something that is so captivating to watch. To have that immersion into the environment, to, to literally put the audience into the story where they are listening at, you know, to every conversation, where they are experiencing you know, every moment of terror uh, along with the characters so that they are the extra character in the scene is amazing and, and is an incredibly powerful storytelling tool. And I look forward to doing more of it.